In today's video, we're going to be looking at helmet components for a Riddell helmet and a shut helmet. Yeah. Hey, what's going on YouTube? Mr. Football here today. Today, um, just kind of doing one of our uh, equipment management uh, videos here. I uh, wanted to talk about um, two different brands, two of the most popular brands in my opinion uh, as far as football helmets go and talk about some of the, the hardware components that make you know all these helmets work and, and the way that they you know how everything just works with the helmet you know what kind of parts are all in here what's air, what's kind of things you need to you know um, just kind of be aware of it's kind of like what things do if you're new to this like some of you you know been you know if you've been around helmets a long time like this will be really elementary so this video may not be for you but uh i just want to talk about it from the standpoint of just like understanding like how everything is is worked together it's then going to lead into a video we're going to do uh next time on uh, building a repair kit uh so when you have a bunch of football helmets at your disposal say you're a coach a high school coach youth coach and you know something goes wrong you know you gotta have you gotta know what what goes where so that's what this video is kind of for is making sure that you can properly identify um, all the components of a helmet so that's going to be the main focus of this video here today all right so we have a uh, shut helmet here today i believe this is the shut vengeance it's the youth hybrid uh, so this is the youth version. So um, the varsity level helmet is pretty close to this. There's a few components that are different on the inside, but essentially the hardware is pretty much the same. The only edit that I really made with this is these usually come with these kind of quick detach uh, face guard mounts. And so basically I had to take that off in order to run a visor on this. The visor is not important. Remember that's stuff that players can put on their helmet. Um, I used this for a video last summer. And so, uh, just looking at the overall shell of the helmet, uh, depending on, now I will say that Shut for a while was sending like a helmet that you like buy from the factory. They were coming with no face mask installed and so you had to install the face mask yourself. And that can be kind of a learning curve, but it's really uh, not that difficult in my opinion uh, to do that. But uh, just let's just, let's start on the front side of the helmet and then we'll work towards the back of the shell and then go to the inside. The main part that we deal with on this side of the helmet is the face guard assembly. So the, the face mask assembly is pretty simple and, and most helmets follow the same um, method. It's just kind of one of those things that's stood the test of time. Um, a few other companies do it a little different. I know that Shut um, could possibly have quick detach. I know Riddell has a lot of detach, quick detach uh, mounts. Um, the first thing, if you have screws on top, you'll have a you'll have you know two screws that you can either and some of these are kind of nice because you can either use a flathead screwdriver or a Phillips and usually get it off. So it's not anything really specific. If you have just common household tools. It usually takes care of you know having to tighten and loosen these and over you know the course of a course of a season you will need to tighten these over time so just be sure to make sure that that stuff stays tight um, and that you can even have your players check their stuff like that too because um, it's one of those things that kind of just you kind of forget about but if you tell your kids to check their stuff they're usually pretty good about it if they know something's loose you know they're gonna be the first person to tell you that something's wrong so the, essentially the front part of the face mask is attached by these two screws up top. Um, there are, uh, and a lot of companies have plastic, um, essentially plastic mounts that essentially mount the face mask to the helmet. Um, you'll have a total of four of those, two up here. The shut ones are uh, nice because they're all the same and they all work interchangeably so you don't have to have special ones that fit anywhere else that's kind of nice about the shut ones so i obviously have one on this side hold one side of the face mask on uh and there and then that's all you have and then you have the face guard itself um and it shouldn't wiggle shouldn't do shouldn't have any movement really uh, it should be on there pretty good 
uh, moving moving up the shell of the helmet. Uh, there should be no cracks in the helmet. Obviously, that's kind of a given. Like usually, helmets get thrown out when they do have cracks like that. It's completely normal to have uh, you know cuts and stuff. And I'll show you a helmet uh, that's kind of like that. You know, completely normal to you know. This was a reconditioned helmet, but through the years, like you know, they're gonna be scuffed up. You know, that's totally normal as far as maintenance goes. But as far as when we go down the shell, the shut helmet has, uh, and, and most of the time these will, and sometimes these helmets will have spots here uh, for where you can put air in uh, the helmet. Uh, and there's a special air pump that goes with it. You can't just uh, get like a pump that you'd pump an air mattress up with. Um, so really, and sometimes in, in this screw that's on top, correlates to um, the padding that's on the inside. Um, I guess one thing I did kind of fail to mention on this side of the helmet, and where it says we're kind of moving back, but um, your chin strap assembly, most chin straps, um, they will snap in, at least for shut helmets, will be kind of at the parts of the temple up here. So when you take this off, and these are the ones that you really want to have stick on there, So this is just, this white part on here is simply just called a chin strap buckle. And then obviously you have the chin strap down here. Chin straps come in many different sizes, shapes, uh, styles, colors, whatever. Um, you know, pretty simple there. Um, something that can happen, this, uh, this would be um, essentially just a part of the hardware little Phillips screwdriver uh, this is what they, it's essentially the helmet snap uh, and so you know that's kind of the the thing that uh, what they're called a snap because it's kind of the, the auditorial sound that you'll hear most shut helmets uh, sometimes and a lot of the old Riddell helmets had where they had multiple hookup points um, so when you hear that snap you know that it's in and so that's kind of the, we'll let you auditorial listeners hear this, you know, a little snap, and then we take it off, you know, there's a, there's a snap to that, if you could hear that. Um, the plastic buckles do break. It is better to have plastic. They've, a, a lot of the times on the metal ones, they're starting to out, they've been outlawing them for years because they used to be really sharp and they cut people. So they're, these really should be rounded off where they're not uh, gonna get somebody hurt, you know crashing helmets into each other and whatnot. Uh, as far as the back, really the only part that has any dealing with is the sweat band that's on the back. Neck band is sometimes this is called. It just needs to be uh, tight. It just needs to be on there. It needs to show the brand. Uh, there is a hidden screw here, but that just goes along with the padding that's on the inside of the helmet. Sticking to the inside of the helmet. Uh, sometimes things that need to be changed over time, and it can be uh, custom to players sometimes, is they, these removable uh, jaw pads. Some of these get worn out over time. What I used to do with a lot of my shut helmets that I had was that I would just, if I could find these cheap, I would just have all different widths and sizes on hand. And when I needed those, I would just go get whatever that kid needed. And that usually helped the fitting process. Um, but these helmets, they, they're pretty simple. They just uh, take out of there. They'll have different widths. The, the shut ones are easier to buy than the Riddell ones. I'll just be completely honest with you uh, with that. It's a little harder to get the Riddell ones just in person, but most sporting goods stores will carry these. I know that Dick's Sporting Goods carried them for a while. Places like Academy would carry them. So if they sell shut helmets, they're likely to sell um, some of the hardware that goes in the inside. Uh, there's not a whole lot of care that happens on the inside of the helmet. You know. Um, all of the lining in here should stay, you know, pretty much down. Um, you know, it, it really shouldn't move. It really just depends on the helmet style as far as what you could see on the inside. These youth helmets are pretty, pretty minimal. Um, you know, when we had these back several years ago, they didn't have a whole lot to, uh, you didn't really have to do much with them. It wasn't too big of a concern. Um, and they were comfortable for the kids. They liked them. So, so that's the shut helmet. Like there's, like I said, it's just some simple components. There's really not a whole lot uh, to really talk about. You know, there's just some of those snaps on the side. Just make sure you know those will get loose at some times. So you just got to make sure you tack those down.
Um, just rescrew them. Next up is a Riddell helmet. Riddell helmets, it's covered up here by this uh, little sticker, but it is a uh, Riddell uh, Rebel Edge. And uh, this is a good middle school youth helmet. Um, I personally tried to buy as many of these as I could get um, because these were these were really preferred by the players. So, uh, you know, I've tried to pick up as many from Dick Sporting Goods when I was a youth coach as I could. Uh, and, and the budget would allow for. So these were really good helmets. Um, and the, the these are pretty minimal, just like the shut ones are. And you'll see that a lot of the components are exactly the same. As you go down the helmet, starting at the face mask side, pretty much, sim pretty much the same. We have, you know, four spots where the screws are. And what's nice is all these parts are interchangeable. Um, the Riddell, uh, you know, the clips that hold the face mask together may be a little more custom. I've never tried the shut ones, to be completely honest with you, because they get a little different down here. But I think if you had to replace the top ones, you could, as long as they... Uh, the only thing that's different about shut face masks is shut face masks are a lot thinner than Riddell ones. So that is something you have to be concerned with. So really, these don't... Uh, the screws would. The screws are the same as far as that goes. Uh, so your components there are pretty much uh, the same. Um, buckles, you know, different types of buckles on these, but you can accept plastic or any other kind, even those off-brand, not off-brand, but all those other uh, chin strap brands, um, you know, you can install those on there. It's really simple, especially, and a lot of times these, the snaps are pretty universal when it comes to helmets. Um, chin strap. Same kind of deal. It's got the snaps on there. You hear that auditorial snap when it's on. Um, one thing that is different about the Riddell helmet is, and now some shut helmets may have this feature by now. I've not kept up with shut in a long time, but I know with Riddell, most for at least for at least the past 20 years, they've had inflatable jaw pads. I was talking about jaw pads, uh, you know, earlier with the shut helmet. They are harder to come by they do cost more um, and we really don't do a whole lot of changing unless you know we get a kid where you know their face is kind of skinny and you got to get wider ones that you kind of thicken up the padding in there so the helmet fits properly that does happen from time to time because these just kind of come with one size um, and but what's nice is is if you can if you can inflate them you, there's some inflation points on each side and that'll help, you know, the fit of the helmet, you know, fit on the, the cheeks just a little bit better or fit on the jaw, as I should say. Uh, moving towards the back of the helmet, uh, a lot of Riddell helmets will have, and I, in, in the newer, some one of the, it's not really a new helmet, but um, it's an adult helmet. They'll have, um, some of them may also have uh, inflation points in the back, uh, the very crown of the helmet. So that one would essentially in turn to the, top pad the youth ones don't have those unless you get some of the more high-end youth helmets like the speed flex or the uh, the youth speed um, but you know those actually you know come up in price a little bit so um, as far as the back not much to really like I said helmets are kind of you know simple in some ways the inside components um, on these not really anything you know too significant i will say because we can see this really well there is a a t-nut i'll show that there it's right by my finger the t-nut uh is what holds that snap in and so you will need some of those um and just i'd say you need a few on hand you don't really need that many but it's essentially a shorter version of one of these it's a shorter version of one of these, and that just kind of helps those snaps stay in, stay in place. So that's kind of one of the uh, you know one of the things we deal with there. So um, that's just kind of some of the components. Like I said, like I said, we look just looked at two different brands uh, side by side and saying that they really do have a lot of similar components. All right, so I just wanted to say thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, in the next video in this series, we will uh, come back and talk about making a repair kit for your helmets. Uh, and just overall, you know, talking about kind of the maintenance, what needs to go in that repair kit. That's kind of where we're focusing next uh, in the next installment of this series. 
So I just want to say thank you guys as always for watching the videos. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed so you don't miss out on any of our content. Um, also, um, make sure you uh, like this video if you liked it. Uh, and, and let me know of any other like more specific videos that you'd like to see kind of in this series. Um, I've got several that I'm, I'm kind of scripting out and wanting to do uh, with talking about helmets. So just kind of getting back to some of the things we used to talk about a lot about, but just kind of talking about it from the management side. Um, and we'll eventually make our way uh, down the list um, as we go. So just wanted to say thank you guys. As always, I'm Mr. Football, and we'll see you next time. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect.